Welcome to my channel. Today, we are about to do a simulation using the NSoft Maxwell software. And the simulation we are about to proceed is about a solenoid. Well, before getting into the simulation itself, let's know what a solenoid is. And essentially, it's a wire wound into a helico, helico coil. And let's get into that in a second. For that, I want to do some software overview in order to understand what we want. Well, the simulation we are about to proceed is one of which we want to create a solenoid and do the magnetic fluxes around it. And see the relation between the magnetic fluxes around the solenoid and a material that will be surrounding it. Here, you can see the, the image I'm showing you right now. And this image is a requirement I have. This is a 2D image and it's basically giving me some uh, prerequisites to what I'm about to proceed here into this geometry. You can follow these steps I'm going to do and you'll have to follow this exact same geometry here. I'm doing this for a university. The idea is to see the purpose between the magnetic field fluxes that are created by the coil and the material surrounding it when you choose the material to be a paramagnetic material, a diamagnetic material, and a ferromagnetic material and also a perfect conductor. In this video, I'm seeing the relation between the coil and a perfect conductor. There's some really interesting phenomenon happening when it's a super, uh, superconductor surrounding a magnetic field. Well, let's move forward to do a bit of a software overview in what a magnetic static solution type means. And when I say a magnetic static solution type, I mean the solution type you choose to your design. For now, I will go into the design I want and choose solution type. Here you have this window which shows you the solution type that you want to, for your simulation to be. And the one I'm choosing is a magnetic static one. Each one of those, they have their own properties and their own reason to be. The magnetic static one is the one I want because it's a solver that computes static DC magnetic fields for objects that are stationary. And the source of the static magnetic fields can be a DC current in conductors, which is the case of this coil here, the solenoid one. It can be a permanent magnet or a static magnetic field represented by external boundary conditions. And for this, I have in the magnetic static solution type everything that I want to my simulation. Let's move forward to the simulation itself now. Very good. So here we are in our 3D design. The idea here is that we want to build a solenoid. Well, we can do it by many paths. You can draw a 3D curve and you can draw a torus and extrude it. But the way I'm doing it is by choosing helix segmented polygonal. And this can be found in a library that Maxos already provides you. The idea here is that a solenoid is quite a used shape that it it has its own library here in which you can just put some inputs and have the output as a result and the output will be your coil. It can be a planar coil or a solenoid coil. The one I'm choosing is a solenoid coil and the way you, you, you choose the difference of them is just by not putting any pitch between uh, if you want a planar coil. And let's go to what this means when I say pitch and other things that I'm about to say right now. Well, so let's move forward to understand what the inputs means in order to understand what we will get as an output. The idea here, since we are creating a segmented helix polygon, we have the segments of the polygon here. Those segments, they mean the segments in which the cross shape of the polygon will be divided. And for here, if we have four segments, the cross section will be of a square. If we have three, it will be of a triangle, and so on. If we have one, it will be of a circular shape. Polygonal's radius will also tell us about the cross section. As a value of 1, I'll have 1 millimeters cross-section as a radius. Very well. The start helix radius is talking about the geometry itself and not the cross-section. Uh, and it's, it's the start radius of your helix. And basically, if you want this to be a constant number, you don't put any radius change. The radius change will change the radius of your uh, helix throughout each turn. Well, so here we are in the pitch. And the idea behind the pitch is that this will give it, for each turn of the helix, an increase in the z-direction. 
which means that if I want uh, my helix to be of 6 millimeters, millimeters, by each turn it will increase to 3 millimeters. So if I have 2 turns, it will be of a total of 6 millimeters height. The segments per turn will tell how many segments you want to divide your shape for each turn. And right handed means the direction in which it will start turning. Well, so let's choose the one uh, the inputs to our configuration, the one in the image you can see right now. I want the polygon segments to not be perfectly as circular because that will put a lot of stress into the numerical solution and also it will not give uh, quite an ac accurate number and it's not that intuitive to think that way but the idea is that we don't want anything to be too smooth because that will put a lot of um, information into the numerical solution it will be quite hard to converge. The idea here is to resemble a circular uh, cross section but not to be as circular as a smooth circle and to do that we just increase the polygon segments to let's say 7 so that would be uh, the cross section would be segmented into many polygons in which it will uh, resemble a circle I would put it 8 to keep it a uh, pair well so the polygon radius here I wanted to put it as 0 0.5 and this the, the start helix radius, I want to put it as 5 as well. I don't want any radius change because I want this to be constant. So the start helix radius will be the end helix radius as well. I want the pitch to be of 1.5 centimeters and I'll put it right here. And the turns, I want it to be 20 turns. So that will make a helical shape in which for each turn you have them to be not that separate from one another. And that's what I want here. In order to keep it quite like as a coil. Segments per turn would be zero. And I want it to be right-handed. So let's see what we have. Very well. So here we have the solenoid shape. Well, we can see create a solenoid in which the center is right into the center of our Cartesian coordinate system. You can move the, the, the solenoid by changing the, the system, by creating a relative system, but that's not what we want right now. And let's move forward, creating the material around it. Well, in order to create the material around it, we know that our material, as you can see in the image, is uh, of uh, 100 millimeters on the outside layer of it and 40 millimeters on the inside layer of it. So let's create that. Let's pay attention to the axis we have here. So we have the y axis facing this direction, the x axis facing the left direction, the z uh, facing up. I want to create the. So I want to create this geometry in the y z plane. So let's do it. I would keep the z as 0 for now and choose the y direction to be minus 50. The, this, the z direction should be minus 35 in order to keep the solenoid center to the square I am about to create. Now, so now let's put the dimensions of it. So I want to extrude it in the x direction as a factor, as a value of five. For the y direction, I want it to be 100. And the z direction, I want it to be 100 as well. And this will give us the outside layer of our square. Very well. So you can see it's quite squared. This is very good. This is what we want. And let's move forward. So here we have it. And very good. So you see now that in the x uh, axis, it's the the solenoid is quite back, and we don't want that. So let's go into the the box we just created, and let's change the x value of it. In order to do that, you just press uh, box and create box. This will go to the properties of the box you created, and in the x direction. Knowing that the solenoid uh, radius is five, and that it has a cross section of 0 0.5 millimeters, I want to put it as a minus 6 here because the cross section is minus 0 0.5 millimeters in the radius, so the diameter of it is 1, and that will give us the solenoid box, the material outside of the solenoid to start right when the solenoid ends. So let's see how what this gives us. Yeah, so this is what we want. So the idea here is to create another square and do some operations in order to create the space here. Let's do that right now. Uh, creating the same draw box. Let's keep it the center as well. But for the y direction now, I don't want it to be um, 
minus 50, but I want it to be minus 20. And for the z direction, I want it to be minus 35, I want it to be minus 5. Since we know the inside layer is 40 centimeters, I want it to be 40 here and 40 here, but we want to give the same extrude in the x direction as the big one. So I'll give it 5 as well, and that will give us the same self-centered box, but in the different dimensions. You see that it's not in the same uh, axis as the x, since we didn't put it at first. Uh, so let's change it right here. Very good. Remember we had a minus 6, so let's just put minus 6 here as well. Very good. So now that we have this here, let's do some operations to create the hole. The operation we are aiming to do is the Boolean operation. It can be found right here, but it also can be found in the moderate part. You choose the geometries you want, press Ctrl to choose them both, and go to Modeler, and Boolean, and Subtract. You want the box one, which is the outside layer, to be the blank part, and the two parts in which will be the geometry that will be subtracted on the two parts. Very well. So now we have the geometry, and as you can see the image, that's what we want. So now that the geometry is almost complete, we need to understand a little bit more on how the magnetic static solution works. Because if we would like to create uh, the solution already, it will be a problem. The problem that will appear is that we don't have a current path going on. And that's basically a wire. We need to connect the solenoid to a wire in order to put some current in it. And that's what we are going to do. This is the end of the part 1 video, and in the part 2 video, you will learn how to create a current path around the solenoid, as well as putting some excitation and getting the results. Thank you very much. See you in the part 2 video.